Officer Center, all officers and guard officers march to the front and center the formation and salute the commander's troop. The storm leaders at this point that the commander would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. It also afforded the commanders an opportunity to give their officers any last minute encouragement prior to a battle.
Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General, Marine Corps Forces Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honor to Lieutenant General Terry Roblin. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant General David H. Burton. Subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 10 11 July 2014, you are directed to assume the duties as the Commanding General, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. Signed, James F. Amos, General, United States Marine Corps. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General David H. Burton. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Commanding General of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. My comments obviously will be short. First of all, Commandant, uh, it's not lost on me or any of the rest of my federal, but, uh, fellow generals. You, ha you have a lot of choices when you pick commanders. Uh, you had them when you picked first MEF, and I, and I would have worked for other guys. They were that good. I mean, my peer group and uh, the ones behind me, but it's not lost on me this privilege. Thank you very much. And I, I would say the same for Miss Bonnie. They have been great teachers. You're right, General Tulane. Uh, this is how you run a family. And they view the, family, the Marine Corps as one big, gigantic family. So thank you very much, man. Uh, thank you to the Tulans. They did a great job for us. We left here a year and a half ago uh, from 1st Marine Division and had a, a ton to learn about how uh, Marine Expeditionary Force runs, because you don't see that from the division level. So thank both of you for all the patience uh, you've given me and Donna, all the, all the answers to all the questions. Uh, Whatever you did with the New York Yankees, thank you for helping them get the Orioles to the top of the American League East, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not sure if you had anything to do with that, but thank you very much, sir, for that. Uh, they, did, they just did a fantastic job of making it easy for us to uh, step in behind you. And we can see where the bar is, it's very, very high. Uh, 
And I can tell you, sir, all I can tell you is the same thing that we always tell you when you give us a job, which is we're going to give you our very best. For all the friends uh, that are here and the mentors, and today, uh, for me, a lot of teachers, and I won't go through them all, but probably the senior one is sitting here in the front row today, uh, Lieutenant General Barry Newton, who took me under his wing, um, 1990 or 1991, and has stuck with me ever since. And there are a lot of other folks, Master Gunnery Sergeants, Sergeants Major, General Officers, Colonels, who have really shaped the way that I think and the way that I lead. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, for setting such a great example for me. If I can uh, be half of that, I'll, I'll be a pretty happy guy. Uh, for my family who made the trip, uh, for all the way from Maryland and Virginia, I said a lot about them yesterday. But, uh, uh, like General Toulon, they do really hold us accountable. They give us the foundation before we came into the Marine Corps. I think the Marine Corps could polish up a little bit on what my mom and dad uh, gave to them, but everything that I am, uh, pretty much I had before I before I put on a uniform. I have a, I, I'll never be able to pay them back. And uh, my son, just like uh, your sir, is uh, from one nine, and they sure do. They do reflect you being a parent, don't they? They make you really, really proud of, of uh, being a parent. And one of our four sons is here, uh, and like him, we're just uh, tremendously proud of the way all four of them turned out. Uh, I won't say uh, uh, anything more about uh, my family. You'll, you'll meet them later on. There's one other individual here, Matthew uh, Meyer, who was here in the first platoon that I was in, in India Company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marine. He made the trip from Detroit. I haven't, I, I don't know why, uh, but, the, but there are three NCOs from that first platoon that stayed together the whole time, and they're all civilians, and they're all uh, see each other every year. I'll keep my feet firmly on the ground. So Matthew, thank you for making this trip. Uh, Don is going to be uh, back in, in uh, Camp Pendleton for the third time in one map. We, we, know, the, we know the area here, but, but uh, we've still got a ton to learn. So I would ask uh, the same patience, same teaching that you gave to the Tulans, uh, we'd ask for the same. And to the Marines, sailors, I'll say the same thing that I, uh, that I just mentioned to the Commandant, and that is you have my very best, and I can't promise you anything more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mark the command and review. Right company! Right turn! March!
to honor those who served in the first Marine Division. The division song, Waltzing Matilda, will now be played. The song originates from Australia, where the division maintained a training base in World War II and prepared for the 